Hey everyone, this video is how to set up your Flipper Zero development environment on a Windows computer. Once you follow these steps, you should be able to build any of my Flipper Zero tutorials and also deploy custom firmware. Let's get started. The first step is to download the Get Tools for Windows. So we're going to click on the click here for download. These tools will allow us to download the tutorials and firmware from GitHub. So let's go ahead and click on open file. And then once that opens, we can go ahead and accept all of the defaults. And then go ahead and close the release notes. Next, we're going to download Visual Studio Code for Windows. This should take you to the thank you screen and then start the download automatically. Go ahead and click open file and then accept the license agreement. And then I usually say open with code action as a choice, but this is an optional step. Otherwise you can take all the defaults. And for now, we'll go ahead and close Visual Studio Code. Next, we're gonna open a command prompt window. So type in command prompt and you should see command prompt app. Now we wanna make a directory for storing our flipper zero files. So let's go ahead and say md backslash fz. And then we'll switch into that directory. So type in cd backslash fz press enter. There are multiple firmwares available for the Flipper Zero. Here's a few of them. This document talks about the differences. The steps for cloning them are basically the same, so go ahead and pick whichever one you'd like. In this video, I'm choosing the Flipper Devices official firmware. So go over to the green code button, click that for the dropdown, and then click the copy under the HTTPS link. Head back over to the command prompt and type in get clone dash dash recursive and then do a right click to paste in that link that you copied and then we can put in the name of what we want to name this so instead of flipper zero dash firmware i'm going to call it official firmware and then press enter now that that's cloned we're going to click on the flipper zero tutorial page and then we'll click on the green code drop down and then click on the copy for the HTTPS URL. Back in our command window, we're going to type in git clone and then do a right click to paste that URL. And this time I'm just going to use the default flipper zero tutorials. So we don't need to type anything here. Just go ahead and press enter. At this point, our FZ folder has both the tutorials and the flipper firmware cloned. So we're going to go ahead and CD into the official firmware folder. And then we'll run the Python command to see if it's installed already. If it's not installed, we're going to click that blue install button. Once it's installed, we'll go ahead and close the Microsoft Store. And then once again, we're going to type in Python just to make sure it did get installed. Then go ahead and type in quit and then press Control and then Z and press Enter. Great, so now we're going to type in FBT VS code underscore dist. And this is gonna download the Windows toolchain, and then it's also gonna set up Visual Studio Code projects for us. Let's go ahead and launch Visual Studio Code. We're gonna choose File, and then Open Folder, navigate to the backslash FZ folder, and then choose the official firmware folder, say Select Folder. I'm going to say trust the authors of the files in the parent folder, but this is an optional step, but then you do need to say, yes, I trust the authors. I always dismiss this dialogue about IntelliSense not being configured, but if you know what I'm supposed to do, please leave a comment below. My Visual Studio Code already has extensions installed from before. If you look at the .vs code extensions JSON, you'll see the list of recommended extensions you should have, and you'll also see the list of unwanted recommendations, which are things you should disable for this workspace. I'm going to uninstall the task shell input extension just so you can see what the experience is when Visual Studio Code starts and you don't have one of the extensions installed. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and restart Visual Studio Code. And you can see this prompt that says task shell input extension is recommended for this repository. Do you want to install? And you say install. So that's going to be what you're going to do for all those extensions that were recommended, but that you hadn't had installed already. There's also a couple of unwanted recommendations. So there was CMake and CMake-Tools. 
So we're going to go ahead and look for the CMake Tools one. And then we're going to go ahead and under CMake Tools, we're going to click the little arrow next to Disable and then choose Disable Workspace. Over on the far left, we're going to click on Source Control. And then where it says Dev, we're going to click on that branch and we're going to switch it to Release. You can also type in the word release to narrow down the list. So now we're on the stable release branch instead of the dev branch, which may be broken. I recommend you install the GetLens extension so you can see additional information when you're looking at source files. I also recommend GitHub Copilot, which is an AI paired programming tool. So you can see all the applications underneath the applications folder. And you can also see the application's user folder is empty. In the QFlipper app, you can see my firmware is currently just some dev firmware number. We're going to do Control Shift B to bring up the build task list. And we're going to say flash USB with resources. Make sure that QFlipper is not running. This is going to go ahead and build the project. And then it's going to flash the firmware onto our flipper. And it's also going to copy over the applications onto our flipper. I'm going to go ahead and launch the QFlipper app. You can see that the firmware update was successful. And then you can also see that the firmware version is now 0.80.1, so I'm on the release build. If we look at the files on the flipper and go into the SD card apps games, you'll see that the only game installed right now is the snake game. So let's install the rock, paper, scissor game from the tutorials. So under application users, right click and then choose open an integrated terminal. You're going to type new dash item space dash path space RPS for rock, paper, scissor dash item type space junction space dash value space dot dot for the parent directory backslash dot dot for the flipper zero directory backslash flipper zero tutorials for the tutorial directory sub gigahertz for the sub gigahertz project where the rock paper scissor game is stored plugins for the plugins direct and then rock paper scissors and then remove the trailing backslash and press enter so you now have an rps folder underneath application users with the rock paper scissors game and that has your application fam file and your c and h files we're going to do control shift B to bring up the build task, but this time we're going to choose build update bundle. And this is going to rebuild the code so that it understands information about that C and header files so that we'll have IntelliSense going forward. I've opened the rock, paper, scissors.c source file. We're going to scroll down the file a little bit and right click on some method and say go to definition and you can see it brought up our speaker file that was where that function was defined. For this next step, you can have any file open like the application fam file or one of the C files. We're going to do control shift B to bring up the build tasks. And then this time we're going to choose launch app on flipper. Make sure that the Q flipper is not currently running because for launch app on Flipper. It's going to go ahead and build our code and then it's going to deploy it over to the Flipper. So now that it is deployed, I'm going to launch the QFlipper app so we can see the screen. And so there's the rock, paper, scissors game that's running on our Flipper. And you can see that it's working great. And then if we exit out of the game and go back to the files, go into the SD card and apps and games, you can see now that the rock, paper, scissor FAP file has been installed on the Flipper Zero. So we're gonna go ahead and make a small change to the file and save it. And then we'll use Control Shift B to bring up our build task list. We'll choose build and upload all FAPs to Flipper over USB. This rebuilds any of the applications we've changed and deploys the new versions onto the Flipper Zero. So we've set up our Windows computer with all the tools we need. We've built ourselves firmware and deployed that onto our Flipper Zero. And we've also installed application user apps like the Rock, Paper, Scissor game and deployed that onto our Flipper Zero. The process for cloning other firmwares is the same. Just don't forget to do the dash dash recursive on your get clone. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or reach out to me on Discord. 
If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe.